smell like barbecue, and I'd it's buy it tomorrow. I already have it in the works. It's called El Briquette. Oh, <laughs> right there. Fist bump, baby. <laughs> you like that? Travis Bishop, TV. Uh, good morning. How are you? I'm well, guys. How you doing? Excellent, sir. How's Thank you kindly. What time are you firing up the fires today? We already started. We have a catering for lunch, so we have a business catering locally. I think my stomach started growling as soon as I texted you about coming on the show. <laughs> Your stomach started thinking ahead of you. Oh, yeah, buddy. Yeah. Good for you. Hey, as uh, you all know in our audience, because uh, we <clears throat> talked to Travis about it before when there were some floods in West Virginia, Travis organized uh, relief as a former military man himself. He knows how to get to places that others can't get to, and he's doing it again now in the Carolinas. Uh, Travis, you got doing another collection. Yes, sir. Uh, how do people take part in this? Um. <clears throat> Again, it's you know easily located right off 81 there in uh, Berkeley Plaza mm-hmm. at the restaurant. We have a we have a couple spaces next door that we are leasing as well, renting if you will, and uh, we have used that space for um, receiving and processing and then distribution. So um, we've collected um, a substantial amount of provisions, if you will, donated by the local folks here that um, that will be taken south on Monday. What are you collecting specifically? Uh, immediate needs, you know, you look at the time frame of where they are in their life. Um, you know, um, these people that have survived this catastrophe, uh, they're, they're needing warm clothes, camping supplies, you know, um, ways to cook and heat their food and also stay warm. So you're thinking like buddy heaters, propane, uh, you know, they're going to need, and what I'm saying for clothing, um, I think universal clothing like sweatpants, sweatshirts, hoodies, uh, thermal underwear, warm socks can be worn by both men and women, boys and girls, you know, because it's universal. Mm -hmm. Um, Right. We we learned a lot from 2016 when we had a big clothing drop, if you will, and it became a it became a flea market of clothes. And we, we spent days sorting trying to size up and place into boxes and um it it was detrimental to the operation really it was a it was a blessing that we received all the of the of the generous gifts that they brought um to donate but it, it in the end result it was a lot of extra work that we could have concentrated on simplicity and efficiency mm-hmm. uh so we've learned that uh in this process from the last time to now you know we want things uh donated pretty much new you know, or, or new, if you will, uh, that's tagged, already labeled. All we do is throw it in a tote with other like items. And then we, we t- and I came up with an idea to do those yellow totes. No more cardboard, no more tape, no more boxes getting busted, different size boxes. Everything is uniform again. There again, the military thing. Mm-hmm. I'm very OCD with it. But what it does really is honestly gives us the ability to work efficiently placing those items in designated totes with labels with a black marker on that yellow tote works perfect you stack them up they're all labeled you can see what's inside and you can rock rock and roll you know so now and but also you maximize your efficiency and your storage inside of a trailer or a container you're not having voids of places inside that you're maximizing the entire fill of the trailer very good and you're making your trip when Monday morning. We're leaving Monday morning. What time? Uh, 080900. Are you taking some folks with you? Oh, a lot of people, yeah. We are we have a pretty good convoy of people so far to start. Um, Where are you headed? We are, we are by the grace of God, we have a farm available to us. Um, uh, Sharon Novak's daughter, Suzanne Novak, is down that way. She made a contact with a farm uh, right in um, Statesville, which is uh, – a 15-acre farm available to us to um, bring our, you know, cooking smokers, if you will, all of our trailers and all of our equipment, our razors, our ATVs, all that will be there. Um, and we can use that as like our base camp, if you will. And then these folks that have this farm have another property in Lake Lure that we can actually set up if we want to and serve out of there, you know, distribute out of there. Um, a lot of big things have been coming this past week in just about eight days to give people kind of a, a sense of what, what we've accomplished as a group of uh, don- donations and gifts, if you will, from the, from the local folks. We've collected over $15,000 in cash, and we probably have, and again, this is just a ballpark guess, you know, probably $20,000, $30,000 worth of merchandise that is uh, already on site ready to go. Um, you know, we've had several, several small businesses and some other larger businesses kick in. Uh, 
you know, I could name names, but these folks don't want the recognition. They just want to be part of the mission. Um, but we've had, we have two tractor trailers literally driven by Bowman drivers on Monday um, to drive down and meet us on Tuesday morning to unload two tractor trailer loads full of merchandise from our shop. Um, we also have a 40 foot container being delivered to the farm so we can put all that stuff in the container. So some big things are happening. You know, the one gentleman, local businessman, great guy, uh, he jumped on board real early. He's already gotten, you know, he's already collected three pallets of charcoal, three pallets of water, a pallet of kitty litter. Um, he's going to bring, you know, some other equipment with him. Uh, so there is, I mean, I've got another gentleman that's uh, giving us a trailer to haul down and has a 300 kW and a 100 kW uh, generator this thing can power like a half of a city block so we have substantial electricity mm. uh, to do whatever we need to do but also we have five or six razor side by sides we have a couple you know ATVs um, we have a five now are, are you yeah. are you coordinating any of this with the uh, local authorities in North Carolina or FEMA or are you just working your own network of people you know what you just said the working. last part yes yes have you had any luck contacting FEMA or local authorities down there to get any assistance? No, nah, we're good. You haven't even tried, in other nah. words. You're just doing this on your own with people that Correct. are down That's there. That's what we did last time. That's fine. And we curious. were very effective. Um, you know, we uh, we know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. and we know so are you, how. are you establishing essentially a staging area at, at this farm? Correct. And then what's the next step? Are you are people coming <clears throat> to you? No, we're going to go to them. We're, we're going to – Suzanne Novak is – very uh connected in that in that in that area um she's making contact points so once we get on site get our provisions locked down get our base camp set up we will be ready to go wherever we need to go from what i understand statesville is, is that Geog north or south carolina uh north carolina north carolina. north carolina um it is centrally located within about four to five uh heavily hit disaster area so we're within an hour to an hour and a half away from pretty much anywhere we need to go and i'm even, i'm even thinking ahead of being a relief support system for the folks that have already been there for two three weeks they might be running out of food they might need some relief as far as a crew you know give them a break um from what i'm seeing this morning just on some i'm catching up on some things there's tent cities already down there of folks that are volunteering living on like there's one city park and they've got all the tents set up in a city park, and there's there all the volunteers are sleeping in tents. So I'm thinking ahead already that we could be a support team to go and feed those guys too, because you know they need to eat. Sure. So, uh, and with that fifteen thousand, just to let everybody know, uh, we had our meeting Tuesday night at the restaurant. Great turnout, probably 40, 50 people showed up. Um, I just sealed um, the 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 purchase with Curtsy Food uh, Food Wholesaler a ten thousand dollar food order. This will feed about 4,000 people, this order, just this order right here. I've already contacted Martin's Rolls. They actually deliver to Statesville. So they're going to be working with me, delivering bread to Statesville where we're located. Um, I'm working on other logistics of uh, forecasting in the next couple of weeks where we go through this food. Um, you know, We're going to be able to get that food down there with drivers that will leave Martinsburg, drive down, drop it, and then come back. Are there other communities doing the same thing down there, Travis? I would assume. I would. I would assume, from what I'm seeing on social media, and then you know, you don't see much on the news, but the social media outlets, uh, you see, uh, you know, that mule team is really effective. They're taking provisions into the mountains where people like these pocket communities of four or five hundred people, they can't get to them, mm -hmm. but that mule team can. And the people with the razors are going into these small pocket communities in the mountains and getting them food and provisions and insulin and, you know, all that. So have you been down there yet or will this be yet. your first trip? that will be my first trip. You know, and this is, I read an article, I don't know, I was, I was overseas, but it was written at mm. probably Wall Street Journal, maybe, I don't know. Um, a similar operation, which you're talking about, run out of a Harley Daily, Davidson dealership in yep. North Carolina. Yep. And they've got air assets that they're using and everything else. Sure. But the challenge here is winter is coming yep. and these people are cut off. It's not like the the water is going to recede and everything is over. They're, no, there are no roads left. They're building from the ground up again. Exactly. So this is a siege With campaign. No money. This goes on and on and on for months. They have no automobiles. They have no right? they have not. They have nothing but them clo their clothes on their back, pretty much. And so... We, you know, we volunteers, meaning everyone that's volunteering for this effort, whether it be from here or anywhere else, they're coming from all over the country. 
you know, I'll be honest, think, think about the magnitude of the army of people that are coming from these many, many states with the millions of dollars been, if you think about collective across all these donations and all these gifts, we are amassing an, a major relief effort. I mean, if it wasn't for the the the, uh, the community, if you will, a lot of people would not make it. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't make it because, listen, you know, this is not a government jab. It's just the truth. If you look at the effectiveness of what these private citizens are doing, they're getting directly to the people, the immediate need. You know, and it, it, it let's face it, it's just numbers. If I had to guess, and I'm, I'm spec speculating, the government will uh, target a mass area of where the majority of people are that need immediate help. They're going to they're going to absolutely concentrate on that, which I, I understand that. That's where most of the people are. That's where most of the people are. But think about where the most of the people aren't. Mm -hmm. That's another bunch of people that need the help equally at the same time. Sure. And they're harder to get to. And they're harder to get to. And there's only so many provisions that the government can get to those places. We're an army of thousands, thousands of volunteers. Now we, as a collective, if you will, are able to target and pocket and hit those pocket communities with our personal, you know, razors and ATVs and equipment, chainsaws. You know, you don't see them doing that. That's fine. Again, they have their place. We have our place. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we're the most effective. Is what you learned from the West Virginia floods being implemented as you head to North Carolina? 100%. And even better. Even better. This is a... This is my third flood relief. It's wild how this comes to fruition, you know. Um, 2012, um, in real, in a very short, quick um, history you know, explanation, Mike Bachinski called me in Michigan. I was in Michigan picking up a snowplow, you know, on Craigslist when Craigslist was a thing. And uh, Mike Bachinski called me and said, "Hey, where you at?" I said, uh, "I'm in Michigan." He said, "What are you doing, in Michigan?" I said, "I'm getting a snowplow off." And I'm seeing my brother. My brother lives in the same town where the snowplow was in Bay City. So. Kill two birds with one stone. He said, you need to come to Jersey and bring some fuel. I said, what? He said, yeah, I need you in Jersey because you're a procurement kind of guy. You need, you can make this happen. I know you can. Long story short, I go to a surplus store, buy a 500-gallon diesel fuel cell, buy a trailer in Michigan, load that fuel cell up, put it in the trailer, and my friend Dan that lives in Michigan followed me back home with his truck and trailer with like six 50-gallon drums of gas. We roll back to Martinsburg. I get my generators and my tools and we load up and we run to red bull stadium in jersey when uh, sandy hit sandy flooded all the subways all the train stations right. every substation that powers those trains and substations or those uh, subways were submerged underwater eight foot whatever fema comes in drops these big generators these big kw generators guess what they didn't bring to run them fuel the fuel so you had fuel we have fuel so Mike Bachinski is working hand in hand with FEMA and Kiwit. Kiwit is this big electrical company in Jersey, um, and they had the contract to go and fix these things. Well, they called me and we rolled in. We had we had fuel for both, you know, vehicles and uh, the generators. So I have a bit of a history mm -hmm. in helping in flood relief, and uh, you know I recognized it from way back that day in Michigan. I recognized you know God gives me you know the gifts and the tools to do what we can do outside of our general life, if you will. Mm -hmm. We're able to use that for the better good of others. And that's what we're doing. Will you be cooking down there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just ordered $10,000 worth of food, and uh, it's coming Monday morning to be transferred onto our reefer box truck, and uh, that's part of the convoy going down. So we have enough food to feed four or 5,000 people probably. And how long will you stay down there, Travis? As long as needed. Um, I'm guessing just up front a month. Three, three weeks to a month, probably. So you're moving the whole shop down there for a month. Um, well, you'll be open here still with other people. We're still open. Yeah, yeah, the restaurant stays rolling. Um, Kelly will run the operation. Mm -hmm. Our crews are good. Um, but I'll be able to take two big commercial smokers with me, along with my 20-foot box truck that we have for the restaurant, and keep everything cold, safe, you know, in the, in the reefer box. So... <laughs> And to uh, to wrap it up, how do you... Uh, how can people, again, help in this uh, Sure. Um, <clears throat> speaking of... We are in the process of getting our 501c3 for uh, West Virginia. It's Ground Hero West Virginia. Mm -hmm. we, it was a thing. We just called it what it was, just a bunch of people, uh, Ground Hero. And uh, now a, it's, a lot of them veterans like you? There's a several. Oh, yeah, a lot of veterans. Um, 
And a matter of fact, a lot of veterans are coming from this operation as well. Uh, we have three vets uh, up in Connecticut that are helping. They dropped off two big truckloads last week mm -hmm. from Connecticut. That's a connection I made years ago. Um, so if they want to help in the relief effort, that would be fantastic. We are going to need more money. We are to stay funded. Number one, to h cover the crew and the, the, the mission to the people. Sure. Um, we're also going to continue to take donations for the next few weeks um, and maybe more. So 30 seconds. How do you make a donation? Uh, come to Martinsburg, uh, Berkeley Plaza. Come to the restaurant um, inside of Mountaineer Meat Smokers, 45 Monroe Street. Um, there's a there's a drop off point right there. You drop it right next to the restaurant. All your your donations and gifts. Very good. Yep. Travis, good to we see you. We appreciate you. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thanks for coming in today. Yes, sir. Thanks. And uh, best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, down there. Appreciate what you're doing. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs>